raises some confusing questions on who to hold accountable. Brian Peck's connection to John. You should hold the. You should hold. Yeah, they should hold the. Um, the executive producers, the owner of Nickelodeon, for hiring these motherfuckers, bro. These kids in here, bro. That shit shows you a lot. It tells you a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, be careful who you put your kids around and who's around your kids, bro. Who, man, and who, who you leave your kids with. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what's good? What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Q1 and Sibby. Now I'm back with another motherfucking reaction video. You know what I'm saying? So this one goes to be reacting to 10 shocking, 10 shocking reveals from Quiet on the Set, the, the Dark Side of Kids TV. You know what I'm saying? I've seen this stuff going, this stuff going all, all around the internet and shit about um, Drake Bell, Amanda Bynes. They all just exposing. Um, <clears throat> The owner of Nick, uh, Nickelodeon, man, I was like, man, after ch look, me, I was a Nickelodeon kid, bro. I used, I used to love all them Nickelodeon shows, man. But if it's, I'm not even shocking because it's, it is Hollywood. There. It's how they got a lot of pedophiles and stuff. You, you, you putting these, they're making these kids do adult things and shit. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm glad that they finally speaking up, bro. Because a lot of these child superstars are going out, coming out to be crazy, but they're not really crazy. They're just traumatized, you know what I'm saying? And so they use drugs to endure their pain, their, their, their pain, trying to get away from the trauma. But it's crazy what these people would do to these children, you know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, man, you like to really give thumbs up, don't give a thumbs down. Y'all know why. We I mean, don't care this you too, you know what I'm saying? If you want to see more reaction videos from me or any other videos from me, make sure you guys go on my channel, check my videos. If you want to my videos on my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, subscribe. Let's get straight into this video. Let's get it. Let's go. Been 17 years for today. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're looking at the biggest bombshells from investigations. All right, Carly, that was my shit, too. About Nickelodeon. Everyone knew it from New York to California. So who would we go to? Who could we possibly go to to complain about this? Amanda Bynes replaced Katrina Johnson. I have less and less and less and then no time to stand. So the new favorite had arrived. I was from 1994 to 1994, oh, Katrina Johnson was the youngest cast member of Nickelodeon's hit sketch comedy series, All That. That was my show. During her time on the show, she was one of Dan Schneider's favorite young actors. And as she recalled in the docuseries, he even considered giving Johnson her own show. Mm. But as she got older, That's what they always the say. became an issue for the producers, particularly her weight, which they called attention to. I mean, that stuck with me. You can't be the fat one. Like, I still hear... Those words in my head to this day. With the addition of rising star Amanda Bynes in 1996, Johnson felt she was progressively sidelined by her former mentor, and she left the show a year later. Schneider would go on to be a significant figure in shaping Bynes' successful career. Yes, I thought it was Josh from Drake and Josh. Her parents saw as concerning. Maybe at the time, people viewed it as comedy, but I think now some people are very uncomfortable with the implication. Gender discrimination and a toxic work environment. In the late 90s, Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider created a spin-off series. I used to love Amanda Bynes. For Christy Stratton and Jenny Kilgan, the only women in the Amanda Show writer's room, it was a dream job. I had been in L.A. for seven years, and so it felt very satisfying that um, someone was going to pay me to write comedy. However, there were red flags from the start. Stratton and Kilgan were well, made to share one salary. With what I'm about to say is, like, don't believe everything that's good to be true because you never know, bro. They, a lot of people say you're a dream, then. And once... But once that... if and Once it was revealed that it's not a dream, man, it would fuck you over, bro. Don't fall for these shots, man. Man, especially these kids, man. If your if, if parents, if you if your child want to be a superstar, make sure you behind them at all costs, man. Have, make sure you have, they have some good lawyers, bro. Because a lot of these people, a lot of these Hollywood superstars and producers, and it's, they would take advantage of your child. And 
it would do anything to your child, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and what I'm finna say. Damn, I forgot for the sake, but let's get back to this video. I, I, I hate when I have my train of thought. Be all messed up. And along with other female staffers, they allegedly endorsed Schneider's misogynistic behavior, mm. degrading jokes and harassment. Right. <laughs> they always say <laughs> shit <laughs> in a jokey <laughs> way. But they really be mean shit. Now, yeah, it's like, oh boy, I, I just think of that poor girl and what she had to, you know, go through. Stratton was reportedly fired shortly before the end of season one. Hillman quit just days into season two and filed a lawsuit against the production company for gender discrimination, mm. ultimately settling out of court. The awful experience had a lasting impact on their careers in the television industry. I knew that this was the end of my career, so it had better be worth it. I could have better stop and to learn that it didn't stop that it was all for nothing. Sexualizing the female cast. In the early 2020s, uh, people revisiting Nickelodeon shows from their childhood have noticed uh, yeah. that some content was undeniably bizarre, bordering on the explicit. Once I saw it again as an adult was when- I used to love her. I came back, so I was like, oh, oh, oh. It was like 101. Oh, wasn't funny. It still isn't funny to me. Old webisodes of Ariana Grande went viral, showing her victorious and salmon cat character, Cat Valentine, attempting to juice a potato, among other suggestive acts. Former employees also noted that Schneider was instrumental in choosing revealing clothing for the young cast and writing adult jokes into the episode. Wow. It was clear that, that there was a permissibility around these sexualized jokes with children. It was par for the course. Like, strange things in these dance. And that was just one of the things he thought was funny. Prior to Quiet on Set, Zoe 101 cast member Alexa Nicholas had already been vocal about her discomfort working on the show. Although she doesn't appear in the documentary. I see a lot of people exposed to uh, what uh, Jeanette McCarthy. What's her name? Jeanette McCart McCarthy. She, the one that played Simmons on uh, Ari Carly. She was talking about this shit a long time ago, bro. Why she stopped doing Ari Carly and stuff. But, damn, this stuff is crazy, bro, man. Hollywood will sell you a dream, bro, but Hollywood is the devil's playground. You know what I'm saying? It's full of demons, bro. Full of demons, bro. For real. That's his video. They referenced Jeanette McCurdy's 2022 memoir, yep. I Have My Mom Died, yep. in which she detailed yep. the I was just talking about that. Abuse and inappropriate interactions. Yep. She called people idiots, yep. buffoons, I was just talking stupid, about that. dumb, sloppy, careless, and spineless. The creator knows how to make someone feel worthless. Inappropriate adult humor. I would tell his ass, get your little fat back ass in the motherfucking gym. What the fuck? You fat sloppy slob. I remember someone from Nickelodeon sitting with What's us up? and saying like, oh, does this mean, you know, this dirty thing? And Dan was like, no. Why would you think that's like tainted, like you tainted something? And they were like, okay. Kids programming tends to have some jokes and references for the parents. But Dan Schneider shows like All That and The Amanda Show often crossed a line. From character names with slang terms to costumes with phallic imagery, it was clear to some people behind the scenes what the writers were alluding to. Wait, why is this in the show? What is what is the joke here exactly? There's this weird element of like, they all were able to like pull a fast one and get away with they it. They got them pickles. And that's like a part them of thick the ass pickles. Crew members and parents would notice questionable jokes and sexual innuendo, but the environment made it difficult to express these concerns, especially to Schneider. And as former cast members recall in the docu-series, they were often uncomfortable with the material, even if they didn't know exactly what the innuendos meant. I'm just looking back at it, it's just... Really right, and that's how I make fun of with the big nose, bro. Okay, he, a, he a black kid with big nose and shit, bro. This shit right here pisses me off. This shit right here pisses me off. The kid with the big nose. Because y'all know how us black people got bigger nose than most people. You know what I'm saying? This shit is crazy, bro. Strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. Traumatizing on-air dares. Nickelodeon's on-air dare segment was essentially fear factor for kids, challenging the young actors to endure gross and scary dares on camera. All that cast members Kyle Sullivan and Brian Christopher Hearn recorded <laughs> moments on the show that made them extremely uncomfortable for themselves and their castmates. Those were particularly traumatic. 
and they were sort of designed to be. The whole idea was that you would have to do something scary on camera, and they got pretty scary. Hearn had one particularly awful challenge of getting covered in peanut butter and laying down as multiple dogs lifted off of him on stage. In the video clip from the segment, he clearly says that he doesn't like it. I don't like this. I feel Sullivan pointed out just how torturous it could be with challenges that involved worms, dead fish, and scorpions. Young viewers I will fuck with that scorpion shit. Yeah. But for the actual participants, it was anything but. I think that that's a traumatized. Look at us and go, you made some money. Nah. So what are you complaining about? And yeah, we collect our money. Sure. But that's still you traumatized. He's so weird, bro. But they know that money is, a, is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. One click on privacy at blocker.com. At what cost? Racist sketches starring black child actors. My time on Nickelodeon played a big part in how I dealt and still deal with racial issues. With shows such as Keenan and Kel, Nickelodeon always seemed to value and encourage diversity. But in the docuseries, all that stars Giovanni Samuels and Brian Christopher Hurst. She's still insane. Compared to their white castmates, they felt, quote, overlooked. I understood the magnitude of being the token black girl, but she's still at the same beautiful how significant that was until the years later. Hearn recalled a hurtful incident when a strange character required him to wear a bodysuit and someone offensively joked about the skin tone color it should be. Mm. Hearing repercussions, he didn't say anything back. Whoever was doing my makeup at the time was kind of like hand on my shoulder, like it's gonna be okay. Like don't worry about that. He just said. Samuels and Hearn also occasionally no. play into racial stigma. He, he should put. He should be worried about that shit, bro. I hate one motherfucker trying to push that shit into the world. Nah, bro, let's address that shit right there, right there and there. Cause you know, he know what the, he know what the fuck they was doing, bro. A, a brown skin suit dressed as aliens and shit, bro. Come on now, come on now, stop playing. Types. Hearn's mother Tracy discussed a sketch that she viewed as racist, one where her son pretended to sell cookies but believed it was made to seem like he was really selling illegal substances. Jason Handy allegations. As a production assistant on Nickelodeon shows All That and The Amanda Show, Jason Handy was a familiar face to young actors and their parents. Speaking in the docuseries, MJ details how her daughter Brandy booked a background role in one episode and began corresponding with Handy via email. She let me read it. It was a very innocent email. It just talked about the shows that he had been working on. But what she thought was seemingly harmless progressed into him sending her an explicit photo. And while MJ didn't go to the police herself, Handy was finally arrested in April 2003 and charged with multiple felony counts involving inappropriate acts and material. Keep your trust in God. All they have pedophiles, but I won't even surprise. And all the kids are why I work for free half the week. I love you, Jason. He pled no contest and received a six-year sentence. Shockingly, he wasn't the only convicted predator employed by Nickelodeon. Registered sex offender Ezel Channel, another Nickelodeon employee. That's Hollywood for you. In 2005. When you look at having multiple child predators who worked at Nickelodeon, it raises some confusing questions on who to hold accountable. Brian Peck's connection to John. You should hold the. You should hold. Yeah, they should hold the. Um, the executive producers, the owner of Nickelodeon, for hiring these motherfuckers, bro. These kids in here, bro. That shit shows you a lot. It tells you a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, be careful who you put your kids around and who's around your kids, bro. Who, man, and who, who you leave your kids with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's about this video. People is crazy. Hi, I'm not just Pivot Boy, but I'm also a trained professional who works here on the set of all that. Like Jason Handy, Brian Peck was well known at Nickelodeon, though the acting and dialogue coach was much more involved and even appeared on screen at times. Kyle Sullivan recalled a get together he attended at Peck's home where he found a weird portrait of a clown. Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around. John Wayne's John Wayne Gates is the clown. Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. He learned that the man had a disturbing, quote, pen pal relationship with John Wayne Gacy, a convicted serial killer who targeted young men. 
Even at his age, Sullivan knew this was strange. However, he alleged he like boys, including adults and parents, also saw Peck's collection of letters and art from Gacy. In his nightstand next to his bed, and he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt mm -mm. if you've known them for that long. No. Even in the face of like this really. You can tell so how, how, how somebody is just by looking at their eyes, bro. The eyes tell you a lot about people, bro. My leg, here we go. Now, push. Three, that made him a stallion. Two, one. <laughs> Drake Bell was John Doe. Have you ever told your story publicly, Drake? I have never Drake. told you publicly. The original Drake. Drake. The third episode on Drake Bell. Former star of the Amanda Show and Drake and Josh. Drake Josh was my shit by then. He detailed the alleged abuse he suffered at the hands of Brian Peck, as a young actor. <sighs> That's my son. Or anytime I needed to work on dialogue or anything, I somehow ended up back at Brian's house. <laughs> and it just got worse and worse and worse. The acting and dialogue coach became a constant presence, managing to turn Bell and others against his father, who was his manager. Man. Bell was arrested just months after Jason Handy in 2003. Due to his age at the time, Bell's name was kept hidden and he was referred to as John Doe, something very few people knew until now. Fortunately, there was no therapy and was left to my own devices, which at that age probably is my boy Drake and Josh. Famous supporters. Drake Bell was in attendance at the day of the sentencing for Brian Peck in October 2004. Though he was relieved his tormentor was finally caught, Bell was shocked to see the amount of support he received from notable people in the industry. His entire side of the courtroom was full. And I see that I see that everybody. Uh, I just recently seen on, on TikTok everybody bashing Josh. For um for not speaking out, bro. You never know, man. A lot of people don't want to, don't want to relive that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let Josh speak on it when he wants to speak on speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Somebody like that. You knew, you knew why you why you speak on it. Blah, blah, blah. But he probably, he probably don't want to relive that shit, bro. You never know what people going through. You never know how shit affects people. You know what I'm saying? Let that man be. Let him speak when he want to speak. For real. Let's watch the video. Full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. These included Growing Pains cast members Alan Thicke and Joanna Kearns, the Amanda Show crew members Rich and Beth Carell, along with actors James Marsden and Taryn Killam. In 2024, Boy Meets World stars Will Friedle and Ryder Strong claimed their letters were based on misinformation. You know, he, he had us, had Ryder and I write letters of support to the judge. And these are things we did. And and again, we did them because we were then lied to. We weren't told the whole story. They were lied to. We changed the fact that we did it. Peck pled no contest, was sentenced to 16 months in prison, and was required to register as a sex offender. Still, he went on to work in Hollywood, even briefly Zach on and Cody. the channels The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. All this shit is connected, bro. The whole Hollywood is connected with each other, bro. convicted sexual predators off of kids' TV shows. Did you watch Quiet on Set? Let us know in the comments. Look at Michelle. It's a house of horrors. No kidding. House of horrors. For children. And it's crazy though. Huh? That a lot of that a lot of these kids' parents allow this shit, bro. And it's crazy, bro. I would never leave no my my child with children unsupervised. I gotta know who the person is. Nah, I ain't going for it. But yeah, man, it's crazy though. But I'm not really surprised because uh, Hollywood's full of predators and demons, anyways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Bless myself. Bless myself. But um, I'm gonna hear you guys' opinions about this whole situation in the comment section below. You like to drink with thumbs up, drink with thumbs down, kind of wild. I'll be on okay to the tube. Just subscribe. See you guys next week. I love y'all.